Here we are uh, doing a demo on how we do our shrink wrapping of our pallets. Now normally we just ship out boxes like this so there's a very regular way of stacking them on a pallet. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we've done pails and they work the same way. You stack the pails up. We don't need to use banding or edge protectors or anything else like that. So uh, the way we've done our shrink wrapping uh, to date anyway, and this has been going on for several years now, we've not had one issue that we know of yet from customers where either the pallet has arrived damaged uh, or, or broken up in any kind of way. So it seems like as if this particular method works well for us. Um, if you notice, we have the pallet, the shipping pallet, which is the natural wood sitting over a red painted one. That red painted one is smaller overall dimension overall. So you can see that there's a bit of an overlap between the outside of the shipping pallet and the red pallet on all dimensions. So there's a reason for that, which hopefully will become clear shortly. Okay, so what we use is a shrink wrap bag, which is a 90 by 95 inch, uh, that's the lay flat measurement. And it's an eight mil thick material it comes in rolls of 25, and we get them from a local supplier here, but they're probably widely available. So what we do is we just basically just dress this thing over, put the open end over the, the boxes, and cover the pallet completely live again. Okay, so once we've got the uh, basic bag over the thing, over the pallet, uh, we start pulling everything down the pallet, I mean, the, the, the shrink length height, vertical height, is greater than the height of the pallet. So what we wind up doing is creating a, a cuff, or we fold over the bottom to make a cuff. And once we've got this set up, you'll notice that the cuff should be touching the floor, and it's, it actually sits below the level of the, the shipping pallet. And again, the reasons will become clear. But what this hap what happens is it gives us like a, a double thickness um, base to wrapping this pallet up. You can see right here how the cuff is sitting on the floor and we're almost ready to start shrinking. Now once we have the bottom all set up like this. You'll notice at the top we've got these gussets that we have to now tuck in. <clears throat> kind of like reverse wrapping a Christmas present in a way, but it's the same kind of idea. And the way we apply these bags to the pallet like this, if you notice on one side of the pallet we have our product label facing outwards and on the box ends where the hand holds are, there's no labeling and that's where the seam goes. There's a seam on both sides. So the seam doesn't interfere. Here's the seam right here. The seam doesn't interfere with the, uh, the labeling. When the pails are used, the pail labels face out in all directions. So it's just one of these things we live with. But for boxes, we don't have to worry about it. So the manner in which we start doing our shrink here, we, we start off at the bottom, we do one side, then we do the opposite side, and then we do one end and then the opposite end. So we're basically starting off by heating the, um, the cuff, getting it to shrink. As this thing heats up, you'll see that there's some tension marks on the side here, which is a good sign. And also, you'll notice that that wrap is starting to grab underneath the pallet. A key feature to how we apply this. And here's the opposite side.
Good stuff. So now we work on the opposite end. Okay, good stuff. And you can see on this corner here how it's really grabbing nicely. Okay. There are various tools available for doing shrinking. This is just the gun that we happen to use with the safety guard on it. Uh, but there are others that use just a basic rosebud. Either way, whatever melts that plastic or heats that plastic is, is good enough. Okay, so that's all four sides done at the bottom for right now. The next thing that we do is we start to heat the top where the gusset is. And we use a stick basically to insert into that pocket we made because we've essentially got three layers of plastic here to heat up. And so what we do is we open up that, um, that pocket so that we can then heat up a little bit in there to kind of get that plastic soft. So I can see what Tap it down a little bit with our stick, a little bit of heat, and then once we've done this side, Repeat on the other side. Good stuff. So once we've got the top done, so now the top is tensioned, the bottom is tensioned, so all we got to do now is just tension the sides. And we do that by starting off on one side and then the other, the opposite side. It doesn't matter which side you start with, <clears throat> but it's the application of slow, even heat, uh, which is the key here. And keep that burner in one place for too long, otherwise we'll make all kinds of holes and stuff and we have to basically start over again. So with the sides starting to tension themselves too, everything just starts to grab. It really accentuates the grab at the bottom because the top is already heat shrunk and the bottom really grabs the pallet well. So that's the ends done. So now we got one of the sides. So we go back and forth on these sides here. Remember, this is only one ply, so it's a lot more sensitive to the heat. So we're trying to apply an even rate of heat even amount of heat 
over that plastic to avoid tearing it for one and two, getting a good stretch on it. Shrink it. Good job. Thickness, but uh, this seems to have worked very well for us. This All right, so there we have it. And as I say, as you can see, looking at the bottom, we've got a really nice grab of the pallet under tension of the wrap on all four corners and to date we like I said we've done this for a number of years and to date we've not had one uh, I guess we could say complaint from a customer who's had pallets shipped this way whether they're boxes or whether they're pails um, and we've been doing this for at least four or five years now with the pails anyway uh, with pails I know it's very common to uh, band each row but with banding we find that um, when they move around on the truck especially if you haven't got a whole truck load they tend to jostle around and they try and find the path of least resistance and they wind up in a circle and kind of fight against this shrink wrap so uh, I think you'll find that uh, banding each row is probably not necessary and the other thing too is uh, corner protectors. Uh, there's probably no need to do any corner protectors on the pails either. We don't apply corner protectors on our pallets. Um, the way we have our pallets uh, spec specced out is the base dimension of a row of boxes is smaller than the area of the pallet. So if you look real carefully, you'll see that the pallet overlaps on both angles so the pallet is the largest dimension in the truck so there's really no need <clears throat> to worry about the, the product getting damaged.